Before starting the mud pump, place the three-way valve in the bypass position. Begin by filling the pits with water and priming the mud pump. Start the pump and let it run until the fluid circulates. Apply pipe joint compound to the threads of the swivel stem, the first drill pipe, and the pilot bit. Raise the rotary head to within six inches of the top stops, taking extra care not to jam the shuttle plate into the stops. Assemble the drill pipe and pilot bit and swivel stem by hand. Then, lower the rotary drive head until the bit contacts the ground. Place the three-way valve in the drilling position, allowing drilling fluid to flow through the bit. Move the rotary valve lever to start the bit rotating in the clockwise direction. Turn the pressure control valve knob to the fully counterclockwise or open position and move the draw works valve lever into the down position, holding it open. The head should not move at this time. Use the pressure control valve to slowly begin the drilling rotation and monitor the cuttings to make sure the feed force suits the soil. Continue drilling until the rotary head comes to the bottom of its travel. You can close the pipe slip jaws around the pipe as a guide, but be sure to open the jaws before the breakout lugs on the pipe reach the jaws. Take cutting samples every length of drill pipe and every time a formation changes. Keep a detailed drill log, indicating the location of the screen and the borehole. When you reach the desired depth, let the rotary head continue to spin and maintain mud circulation to remove all cuttings. If you fail to thoroughly clear the cuttings, the bit may be trapped by the settling of the cuttings when the fluid flow is diverted. Now, place the three-way valve in bypass position to divert the flow of drilling fluid back to the pits. Raise the rotary drive head to allow the slip plate jaws to close around the drill pipe. Now lower the drill head to engage the breakout lugs in the slip jaws. Leave a one inch gap to allow room for the pipe to move down as it unthreads. Reverse the rotary by pushing the valve lever sharply to the reverse direction to allow the swivel stem pin to break out of the drill pipe. The pipe will drop free and into the slip jaws. If the pipe isn't freed, it's an indication that you didn't completely remove all the cuttings from the hole. Apply pipe joint compound to the swivel stem and next drill pipe, then raise the rotary head to within one inch of the top stop. Screw the new pipe into the pipe resting in the slip jaws. Don't completely tighten. Position the swivel stem threads about half an inch above the top of the new pipe. Engage the rotary valve to slowly turn the swivel stem. Align the pipe and swivel stem threads as they start to engage. Just as the top and bottom threads begin to tighten, return to the neutral valve position to stop all movement. Raise the rotary drive head and pipe string so that the slip jaws can be opened. Place the three-way valve in the drilling position. Wait to make sure circulation is re-established and fluid comes out of the borehole, then resume drilling. When the borehole has reached the required depth, you should remove the drill pipe. Allow time for the drilling fluid to circulate and completely clear the hole of cuttings. It is time to remove the pipe from the pilot hole, taking precautions not to drop it down the hole. Place the three-way valve in the bypass position. The mud pump is no longer needed, so you can shut it off. Raise the rotary head and close the slip jaws around the drill pipe. Position the breakout lugs in line with the opening in the slip then lower the rotary head so the larger end of the pipe is at least one inch above the slip jaws. Reverse the rotary by pushing the valve lever sharply in the reverse direction, but do not hold it. Leave no more than an eighth inch gap between the edges of the tool joints. Engage the J-latch. Raise the rotary power head. The slip jaws should remain closed as the pipe rises. When the next joint appears, quickly open the slip jaws and then close them after the joint passes. Again, raise the rotary head, close the slip jaws, position the breakout lugs, and lower the rotary drive head so that the bottom of the tool joint is one and one half inches above the slip jaws. Reverse the rotary to break out the bottom set of threads. 
continue reversing until the bottom pipe drops free and the drill string is suspended in the slip jaws. Disengage the J-latch by lifting and turning. Unscrew, remove, and place the drill pipe back in the rack. Lower the rotary drive head and engage the swivel stem threads into the pipe that remains in the slip. Do not tighten the threads, but leave an eighth inch gap between the tool joints. Make sure the threads are adequately engaged. Engage the J-latch. Repeat the process until the last pipe is pulled. Place a cover over the borehole to protect it from falling objects until the casing is ready to be placed. At this point, the drilling crew prepares the drill to ream the borehole to six inches. First, remove the pilot bit and connect the drill pipe with the reamer and pilot bit. Remove the cover from the borehole. Start the mud pump and divert the mud flow. Wait until circulation is established. The reaming is done the same as drilling the pilot hole. At this point, you are ready to finish off your well by inserting the casing and screen, flushing the well with chlorine, and preparing the area around the hole. You will then develop the well with the baler and pour the pump pad. Finally, clean up your job site and enjoy the fruits of your labor for many years to come.